What a delightful way to finish the regular season. Decision Day 2024 for LAFC. Hello, everyone. Dave Denholm with you along with Mario Rees. Mario, good to see you, buddy. This is LAFC Plus episode 36, and it is a good one as we preview the playoffs and talk a little bit about that decision day. Mario, what a day it was at BMO Stadium. What a day. Oh, my gosh, Dave. I was always, you know, confident going into that day, going into that day that that LAFC was going to handle their business. Mm -hmm. But, you know, what was up in the air was just if Houston was going to help out and take down the Galaxy or at least at least get a draw. And it was dramatic and it it all happened LAFC's way. Uh, it was just amazing, an amazing night, and I couldn't even sleep that night. I went to bed probably like around 1 o'clock in the morning, and I slept maybe two hours, and I woke up in the middle <laughs> of the night, and I was wide awake, and I couldn't go back to sleep. I was wide oh, awake, and I stayed up to the next day. I was just got on my phone. I didn't know what to do because I was just wide <laughs> awake, Dave. It was just crazy. That's the, awesome. The, the adrenaline was just rushing. How about you, Dave? Yeah, no, it always it, – it, honestly, not always, I shouldn't say – but most games are like that for me. Not quite that impactful on my sleep, you know. But I do. I go to bed really late after games, super late. Yeah, can't sleep, you know, right away. Like I have to wind down for like hours. It seems because we win mm-hmm. so much, and you're I'm more pumped up. <laughs> Sometimes I'm more pumped up after a loss, but in a bad way, right? Like I'm frustrated or right. something. Like it shouldn't have happened. Or oh man, that's like how did we lose that? You know. But then you kind of I crashed quicker on those i'm i'm high as a kite in terms of trying to sleep when we win and yeah. that's just it, it takes hours sometimes so yeah little insight there on the radio team for lafc <laughs> mario reese and dave at home i yeah i definitely it takes me a long time to get you know down if you will from a match especially like what happened on saturday and what did happen was uh we left it late that's that's bottom line that as did houston which was uh, even later, but that was part of the uh, magic, if you will. We all knew the scenario. LAFC, first and foremost, as Mario said, had to take care of their own business. They had to win. If they could win by two or more goals, that would help in a sense that then you, quote-unquote, only needed a dynamo win, no matter what the score was. If but you know what, Dave? LA- Chirundolo, he had the right mindset, right? He had the right mindset for the entire group. Like, let's just go in there and do what we got to do and handle our yeah. business because that's all they could, could control. Sure. And so that's what happened, you know, and then Galaxy, of course, they stumbled. They stumbled at the very, very end. And and now the playoffs are coming to, to BMO Stadium for probably the entire Western Conference run there for LAFC. So, yeah, wow, get well, ready. It, it was such madness in the sense that LAFC's game, obviously, we left it late and, you know, got the second half win, three goals in the second half, quote unquote, yeah. leaving it late. But then our game was over. And we're still thinking, oh, no, you know, like this hang on, Houston. Like their game still got a long way to go in a sense. I mean, minutes, but felt like forever. Then they give up the PK. So we just did all this to come back and win two game, you know, two goal difference and 3 1, <laughs> big victory. Everybody's happy at BMO. Then it's like, oh, no, not a penalty. They go to VAR, right. they give the PK, right? They, they on VAR, they call it a but PK. But Dave, the, the timing of it is just bananas oh. because our the whistle blows at BMO Stadium and the game is over, and we realize there's a PK at that same time. Yeah. It's just so bananas. We see that go in, right? Heaven forbid, you know, Galaxy struggled on PKs all season, so you knew they were gonna bury that one. Gabriel Peck just buried it oh, Steve yeah. Clark's very good on PK as the Houston goalkeeper but he guessed wrong and that was it so then you're thinking oh no it's just so like look mm-hmm. you needed the galaxy to stumble so yeah. we could only do what we could control and if they were going to draw then they wouldn't deserve to win the west like they they would have earned it of course like there's nothing LAFC could have done on that day right we can't stop the galaxy from doing what they're doing but then mm-hmm. just Houston just kept coming and it just I don't know why the Galaxy didn't, frankly, have 11 guys like right in front of John McCarthy, you know, like the whole rest of those minutes, but they didn't yeah. seemingly. And uh, not that it was like, they, not that it was some easy goal by any means. Daniel Steers is a, a beautiful goal in the hundredth minute, but wow, talking about leaving a lay. And then Mario, you were in the middle of an interview. Let's here, let's play the yeah. Marlin goal. This is how LAFC ended. This is the Marlin goal that really kind of made me feel like we still, like, okay, 
Oh. You all well, you could. That's how I felt, yeah. right? I mean, so LAFC did everything they could, winning three one. Here's the third and final goal in the ninety first. Galaxy minute. still trailing one nil in the ninetieth minute at last check in Houston. Here it comes in, a Twesta sending it in near post. Kennedy! It's a goal for Marlin. LAFC lead three one. Marlin with his first goal for LAFC. Is it enough to win the West? Yes, and I'm coming after Marlin because when I talked to him when he first got here, I said, "Let's do an interview in English." He said, "Give me thirty days. Give me thirty days. I'll come back to you." <laughs> so I'm gonna come back to him for that interview, after, especially after that goal. You know, of course, the great Amazing. Brazilian defender, Marlon. Yeah, first goal for LAFC. What a big one, as it turns out. The biggest goal mm-hmm. in terms of winning the Western uh, Conference because they needed that two-goal cushion. And uh, Eduardo Tuesta, much praise to him, Mario, comes off the bench late. Not you know, yeah. It's not like he had 45 minutes to settle in. Really, his f- first few touches, he scores a great goal. That gave us hope because that made it 2-1. And then Edward wins the man of a match. He gets an assist on that Marlin goal you just got. So kudos to him. What a performance. Yeah. And so I believe so he then was I went chosen and talked for, to wasn't he chosen for MLS team of the week? Was he? he? Marlin? Oh, yeah, think, so. Yeah. Two subs come in, talk about depth, and they're on the MLS yeah. team of the week because of the goals they scored. Yeah, so then the whistle blows. The game is over for us, and I go and grab Sergi for a walk-off interview, and I'm about to tell him, you know, like how you guys handle your business, and, you know, it looks like Galaxy's about to take care of business on their end in Houston. So I'm interviewing him, and here's how, how that went. Things get real now as we go into the playoffs. What makes this team here special? Because we know you guys are all about trophies. Yeah, you, you, you can see it today. Uh, we know we didn't start... Uh, as, as we have to start, but then you see the reaction. I'm, I'm, I'm watching uh, 11 shots on target in the second half because in the first half we, we had zero, 25 shots. We push uh, the rhythm. Uh, we, we do the things how we have to do it. And this team, they, we, did, we did our job. Let's see what happened uh, at the end. <laughs> you got us here, Houston. Houston, have won Houston has just won. They Houston won has just won right now as we speak. Congratulations. Amazing. Amazing. Top they seed won. in the West. Yeah. We saw that on the screen. Going into the first position. Yeah, okay. We, we, we wanted to do our job today. If it's for being the first one, perfect. If it's not, we, we took it. But now, amazing. Uh, all the playoff playing here. It's an amazing advantage for us. You can see it at the end, how, how they push us. Amazing. Congratulations, Sergi. Good luck in the playoffs. Thank you so much. Let's go. Dave, and it is a, a huge advantage for, for LAFC to have all those games in the playoffs because nobody in the rest of the league has home field advantage the way that LAFC do with the 3252 and with the rest of the LAFC faithful crowd there at BMO Stadium. So tremendous, tremendous night. Just a great night. You're right. And it... I like that it kind of culminates what was really an impressive season so yes. far. Now, look, there's work to be done, right? We're not going to sit here and say, mm-hmm. oh, the season's great. Like, if they have to play well in the playoffs. They got to go, you know, you, let's go win the MLS Cup, too, of course. Like, that is the yeah. goal. But it just, it is kind of like a little clincher on the regular season and all the stuff they went through with the U.S. Open Cup, of course, losing the League's Cup final, but then immediately having to kind of get right back at it to win the U.S. Open Cup. Just impressive, you know, just amazing. It's almost a balancing act for Terundolo as far as each and every single game. Yeah. And to still get to the final of the League's Cup, you know, that's managing the whole season. That's managing games. And then get back to the regular season, then the Open Cup, and managing managing those games. And now actually managing the entire regular season to end up in first place. Amazing. And what it also... It'll be our 100th game the last two years, the first playoff. Oh, my gosh. So they're going to play a minimum of 101, right? So let's say you flame out the first round, which we're not expecting. So you lose two Mm -hmm. straight somehow. You you played 101 games in two two years. That is unbelievable in MLS, you know? And then, of course, you got CONCACAF Champions Cup, oh, by the way, coming up to start the next season. So you're going to be very busy. You know, that's that's another story for another podcast, but – yeah, it's just amazing how they balance this stuff out. 
but it comes down to that depth we talk about all the time, Mario. Yeah, we just said it. Yes, Atuesta comes in late. Marlin comes in late. You know, mm-hmm. didn't didn't play a ton, but look at the the uh, you know two goals and an assist combined between the two of them to win a game that you had to win and to win it in the way you had to win it to make it easier, you know, as easy as you possibly could for Houston to get the two mm-hmm. goal difference. And credit to San Jose Earthquake, they could have rolled over. No, some people will say they did in the second half, but they were playing hard. The Earthquakes wanted to spoil that night for LAFC it, and be yeah. the only team that beat us twice in the regular season. By the way. <laughs> they would have been the only team to do it this season, to beat LAFC twice in the regular season had they done it, which would have been quite an amazing stat, frankly, for a team that, you know, won six games so far this year but well and it is about that depth you're so right dave especially for for the really great teams that want to pursue you know multiple trophies because you're going after all these different tournaments all these different games so you gotta you gotta have some rotation but the key is and a lot of players are saying this that when there is rotation they don't feel it Mm -hmm. when you don't feel the level drop off no. That means you have a solid team. And it's obvious, you know, like guys like Eduardo Atuesta who want to play more, you know, he's happy he can contribute for the, the little minutes that he has been getting. But, you know, this is a problem that the good teams, um, they need to have if they want to pursue really, really big things. Yeah, you need it. You're right. You don't just want it because everybody makes that kind of cliche. Oh, it's a good problem to have. You want to be able to, you know, do you want this option? No, you need it in MLS mm-hmm. anymore. You're right. If you're going to be a successful team, as Mario said, because then you're going to be in multiple competitions, deep in multiple competitions, hopefully, which not every team can pull off, even if you're a pretty good team. So yeah, you need that depth and LAFC certainly have it. No doubt about and, it. Oh, I mean, by look, the way, who else was on the bench, Dave? Who was on the bench that night? Carlos Vela oh, was dressed yes. and ready to go. <laughs> Talking about depth there. How how cool is that to have, uh, you know, LA soccer icon here, legend King yeah. Carlos Vela on the bench ready if you need him, you know, and he's barely making his return to LAFC. So that is a big thing. That was so cool to see him dressed up and ready to go. Well, and, I mean, people might not remember it. You know, a lot of all the LAFC people will, but people who listen to this podcast that are not necessarily LAFC fans, part of the plus of LAFC plus. Carlos mm-hmm. Vela had nine goals and 12 assists last season. So it's not like he was, you know, uh, we see the decline and he had like a nice little getaway season where we're all thankful he was around. He had four goals and four assists and, you know, he had nine goals and 12 assists. 21 gold contributions in MLS play alone last season. So it's not like he was like, oh, he just had to go because it was just, what a great career, but it's time to, he can still play. Yeah. So, and we didn't even think about, really getting any contribution from him this season once it kind of mm-hmm. developed the way it was going right anything you get was going to be amazing well we might see it in the playoffs so like because you just can't assume obviously you can't assume someone's going to come back like he did you're grateful that he does but yeah it's just even without the great carlos vela they just rolled on you know and that's uh just a, again a testament to that depth one of those depth pieces is not a depth piece he's the main man Kudos to Dini Buwanga, by the way. The first goal that got this started in the second half was his 20th, which means for the second straight season, he scored 20 goals. I think that's happened less than a handful of times in all of MLS history. So it's yeah. not, you know, it's not a, you know, it's hard enough to get to 20 goals, do a two straight seasons. It's like, because it also means it's not just being a great player or prolific. It means your team is good because your teammates around you are feeding you the ball. They're getting you in. It means you're healthy. Let's be realistic because mm-hmm. it's hard to score that many goals two straight seasons if you're not. So, and it means you basically lay it on the line and put out 100% every time, frankly. And it also Which, means that you get off the plane from international break and you exactly. want to play and you want to get in the starting lineup <laughs> the very next day, yeah. as he's done many, many times. And I don't want to hear that, you know, I get so tired of hearing the, they used to say this with Carlos Vela too, the year he had 34 and 15. Or, oh, he's so many PKs. Yes, Denis Buwanga was 7 of 8 for PKs, right? I'm not going to bail you out on this if you're a hater of Denis Buwanga and you say, oh, so go find out how many of those he drew. How many of those eight penalties he took, was he the one getting fouled at the last second before he yep. scored? That's so, so you true, go, You go ahead and do that research. I'll let you, you know, I've seen them all. So, <laughs> it, 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 no, I'm not saying all eight were, but there was a reason Carlos Vela 
it should, should not be, oh, he's had so many penalties down the stretch that season in 2019 because he scored 34 goals in 31 appearances or whatever. Yeah, you know who was getting fouled all the time when he was about to score? It was Carlos Vela. That's, you know, I mean, a lot of the mm-hmm. time. So, yeah, Denny Buwanga is doing a, a whole lot of work this season to get to 20. Like, he worked his butt off, frankly, to get there. And rightfully so. He's that good. So, that's what you expect from a great player. No doubt about it, Mario. And uh, yeah. wanted to praise him for that. But you also have a little something you want to praise from Denny. Well, before we get to Denis, I also want to praise uh, Hugo Lloris because, yes. because he made a save oh, in that 88th minute that, you know, we're excited about the win and we're excited about the goals and what happened with the Galaxy. But that that save that Hugo Lloris made, nobody's really talking about it. Pellegrino was 1v1 with Hugo Lloris and, and Hugo makes that save in the, I think it was like the 88th minute or so. And that saved the entire rest of that night for LAFC. Yeah, there would be no number one seed LAFC if it was not for that save. It was a tremendous kick save from from Hugo Lloris. And actually, I was listening to the comments from him after the game, and I, I grabbed a, a clip where he dropped a lot of gems in this clip. I want to play this clip because he speaks a lot of facts. So take a listen to this. Yeah, we, we, we share tonight uh, a great emotion. Uh, not only... Um, as a team, but as a club, I would say. But um, at the end of the day, uh, you know, it's just uh, uh, being first, you know, in a regular season. Um, I mean, uh, there is nothing more to celebrate. Uh, so, but it's good. It's good because um, I believe that uh, <clears throat> it, it rewards um, a lot of effort, and it put us in a, in a, in, a, in a good position for. For the playoff, uh, so that's the the good feeling tonight. It, we know that uh, we're gonna have the um, home advantage, and uh, with the help of our crowd, that was again amazing tonight. You know, uh, we have a, a lot of hopes, but uh, still, it's a, it's a long way to go. But it's important to appreciate uh, those type of movements, and uh, and also I would I would like to add something really special like. Uh, because tonight, um, I believe that the bench made a difference. Uh, the players who came on uh, showed a lot of uh, personality uh, because um, they changed the game. And, uh, and that's the best feeling that we can have after a game like this one is like we can feel that everybody is committed and, uh, and everybody is ready to fight uh, uh, for, for the team. And, um, and that's. The, the best feeling that I can have tonight is this one. That's a that's a World Cup champion. That's a World Cup yeah. winner right there. Talking, <laughs> dropping so many gems. You know, just yeah. saying that you have to recognize the the big moments. You recognize those big moments and you celebrate them for what they are. But there's still work ahead. He has that in his mind. You know, mm-hmm. like even we're even though we're celebrating, there's still work ahead. And then the second thing that caught caught my mind was just him. You know, just giving credit to the depth of the roster. You know, yeah, and how much the, the subs, they really impacted the game. And that's what you need, you know, making subs off the bench. And like I said, you just don't feel the drop off. There's no drop off there. And that's big. I couldn't agree more. And it, it, it kind of shows itself to me as I was broadcasting the match. It hit me like uh, uh, Olivier Giroud. He just turned 38. Right. So he's in mm-hmm. tremendous shape. I'm not saying he's, you know, he's he can play. But you bring in a 40 year old sub to replace him. Like, and, and it didn't even, as I was broadcasting, I'm not like, I ne- it never hits me like, oh, they're taking out Giroud. Like to myself, I would never, obviously you don't say that. But as a fan, even like, as I'm watching mm-hmm. the match broadcasting, but I, ne- I never go like, oh no, they're taking out Olivier. Like, not that he's doing anything wrong, but it's just the right. depth. It's like, oh, okay. They're gonna, you know, it's 70 minutes. The guy ran himself, you know, ragged and he's been playing, playing his butt off. Okay. The depth is there. You know, it's like, and it look, LAFC have had some great teams along the way. This is probably the deepest team we've ever had, Mario. I mean, it is a deep team. We've had some deep teams so along deep. the way, too. Yeah. But just like, it just doesn't matter who you bring in. There's never like a, oh, oh boy, uh, you know, we're taking him out. Like, oh boy. Even Denis, like, of course, Denis, the centerpiece of the offense, no question. Like, he's 20 goal scorer. And he doesn't get subbed out very often because he's an animal, right? He does. He's a he doesn't beast want doesn't to want come to. out. Yeah, 
But if yeah. he does, it's not like you're like, oh man, you know, like it just. I'm not saying it doesn't matter because he's Denis Bawanga. You want him in there, of course. Steve yeah. Drumlo wants him in there every minute. But you don't have to like. They don't have to run, be run ragged. Like there's enough depth that you don't even. You just think like, okay, here comes another good player. Like let them do the job. As as yeah. Hugo Lloris said, basically, like, and Steve Trundle always talks about it. But I will say this: I'm glad you brought up Larice because we've been talking about him, no question. But these are again mm-hmm. for the plus of the LAFC plus audience. If you're a big MLS fan and you don't necessarily see, let me state plainly: there is no goalkeeper in MLS better than Hugo Larice. Now. Is he going to win goalkeeper of the year because of some computer stats or whatever, or he doesn't have to make as many saves because the LAFC is very good as a team? No, he's not going to win goalkeeper of the year. The voting won't be there for him. And no right. disrespect to whoever wins or the other guys like Roman Berkey or some great goalkeepers around MLS. Stefan Fry mm-hmm. has had an amazing year. Um, mm-hmm. But nobody's better than Hugo Lloris in MLS at go- <laughs> as a goalkeeper. It's just that's not possible. This guy won yeah, a he impacts the game reason, in you know? so many yeah, ways. I mean, exactly. It, you know, the like, way he's talking throughout the game, even if he's not making saves, he's still controlling. He's actually controlling the whole game as a keeper sometimes, you know? I agree. So I agree. And he's had some big saves and he, he's had some a lot of clean sheets. But, you know, let, let's get back to talking about Denis because Denis, you know, he he was sparkling. He was shining that game. He was also <laughs> shining after the game. He was shining also because he came in looking like this for the post game presser. You see him shining there with that jacket. This is something oh, different. No sequence, he wasn't yeah. wearing this on the way in. He was wearing a totally different outfit, but Denis is Denis. So he's going to wear whatever he wants to wear and he's going to change up outfits <laughs> if, if he feels like changing up outfits. So he came out post game with this one. Right here. Yeah. And you just can't be like a mediocre player wearing something like this. Like, you got to be Denis Bawanga. You have all, all the confidence in the world to rock a jacket like this. Yeah. And I don't think the video that we're, you know, if you're on YouTube, you can see it. I don't think it even does it justice, though, really. Right, more Because of the yeah, dark yeah. nature of everything. It's a little dark. It's a, yeah. Like, you would be even more wowed in person. Uh, Denis has mm-hmm. he's got good football fit check game. There's no question about that. We've certainly <laughs> highlighted some of it. We'd like to highlight, you know. Anybody and everybody around MLS with the with the fit check, but yeah, Denise right up there, no doubt. Not yeah, we just had our we LAFC. had our, our chance to vote for the MLS, you know, awards at the end of the year. We had our chance to do that. We were talking about that before we started this podcast. But if there was, you know, most fashionable player in all of MLS, you know, I think my vote would probably go to Denis Bawanga right here for sure. I have no problem with that. You you know you know the game much better than I do when it comes to football fit check. So I would, I would just vote for who you ever told me to. So I can't disagree <laughs> though. Yeah. <laughs> Very good stuff from Denis Bawanga. Great game. 20th yeah. goal, as we said. And LAFC win 3-1. It sets up certainly the playoffs after decision day are now all set up and ready to go. So let's get to around the rest of MLS. This is part of the plus yes. of LAFC+. Plus. You had some 8-9 drama in the East coming into the day, right? Most of the stuff, there was a little bit of jockeying for positions. Most of the, everything was settled in terms of the real, you know, key things. Can But Inter-Miami, we'll talk, you know, we'll just throw it out there. Of course they won, and of course they ran over New England eventually because of Lionel mm-hmm. Messi, and they get the best record of all time. They deserve it, no doubt. What a season they had with or without Messi because he missed a lot of games. And, yeah. uh he comes in in the what fifty eighth minute, three assist, three goals and an assist. You know, nothing big. Just you know, thirty two minutes and he just had an assist with Argentina earlier in the week and three goals <laughs> international. <laughs> oh, by the way, he added a hat trick with <laughs> with Argentina yeah, hat in trick. one of the game. I mean, he's the greatest of all time. And you know, real quick, uh, we're gonna get on the soapbox again because I'm around social media, following MLS, following soccer. I'm getting a little tired of you know. People like, oh, they they focus too much on Messi and MLS. Like, that's one of the new criticisms. There's too much mm-hmm. attention. Too much attention on Lionel Messi. Mm-hmm. That's not possible. That is not <laughs> possible. You cannot yeah. have too much attention on the greatest player in the world who decides to come play in your game when he's still the greatest player in the world and it's proving it every mm-hmm. game. Are, yeah. you in, are you people nuts? Frankly, I hate to get too, you know, be too negative about this, but open your eyes. Oh, they focus. Stop being a hater or whatever the kids are called. I don't really. I'm. I feel like an old man now. But 
Are you kidding mm-hmm. me? Mario, Dave, I mean, like, 36 goal contributions from Messi in just 19 games. Come He's on. been hurt, you know, a good chunk of these games. To have 36 goal contributions is pretty crazy. We know how good of a season uh, Vander's having. And, you know, he's been having a great year for Portland, but he's played nine more games than Messi. So let me put it in some perspective that isn't even quite mm -hmm. the same. That's Mm -hmm. like LeBron James deciding to leave the Lakers and go play in, you know, Europe. Let's say he wants to go play for Real Madrid. And that's like Real Madrid fans saying, oh, he's, LeBron gets too much of the basketball attention in Europe. Well, what do you think would happen? I mean, come on. <laughs> Are you kidding me? This is messy. This is yeah. like times 10, even over LeBron. I mean, like, but use it as an example. Are, have you lost your mind? Oh, there's too much attention on him. I want to go back to when it was before Messi. And and they focused on all the teams. Oh, you got to be kidding me. Quit <laughs> you know what, though? Be- before Messi, before Messi, there was another guy, another guy in 2019 that had 49 goal contributions, and his name is Carlitos Vela. I just want to throw that out there. But no, and Messi did, is dominating. Yeah, let's and- talk about all year that year. Carlos Vela, yeah, of course. he earned it. Yeah. Of course. He was the best player. Yeah. Right? I mean, like, so, mm-hmm. yes. I mean, but then, then this is like Messi coming in, and they're having success, and he's having success. And he's still the best player in the world. Like, grow up. This is the entertainment business. What do you think they're supposed to do? This is so, it's like, uh, it's just people wanting to hate. That's what it is for no reason or for dumb reasons. Not even for no reason. It's for a bad reason. Oh, too much attention on Lionel Messi. Yeah. And Messi he is, he, you know, he deserves all that. He's going to steal the show, of course, every single time, every single night. But low-key, Dave, uh, what a season Luis Suarez is having, too. Oh, yeah, of course. Two big goals over the weekend against uh, New England Revolution. Finished with good. 20 goals himself. So it wasn't for if it wasn't for, for Messi, who is dominating and taking all the shine, there would be a little bit of headlines for Luis Suarez. Sure. I mean, can you imagine oh, that? Absolutely. But it's also funny in that sense, too. And Suarez did it, and you know he didn't play 34 matches either. Okay, so he missed yeah. some matches, and he's, he's killing an incredible it. player, incredible player. Mm-hmm. But he had 20 goals, right? Yeah. He didn't have 40. <laughs> he didn't right. have 50. You know, like every time we hear about these great players coming over, besides Messi, he's at a different level than any of them. Mm-hmm. Oh, Lorenzo Insigne, he's gonna destroy MLS, right? You hear all the Syria guys come out and like. He's going to kill MLS. This is going to not even be – it's not even going to be fair. He's just going to dominate. The guy, is, he's okay. <laughs> he's all right. Like, he's a great talent, <laughs> right? I mean, we can't deny his talent. But yeah. there's more to it than just he's going to come in and crush this league. This guy's just going to destroy. Yeah, yeah, well, of course Suarez is a great player. He's going to get his – he scored the same amount of goals as Denis Buanga. And Denis, right. we know how good he is, but, like – Come on, like there's, you don't see people around the world saying Denis Bawanga is going to destroy Emma. You know, they don't even, you know, like it's just. Come on, this you know what is- sticks out though about Messi is that he is so happy at Inter Miami. Like he truly sure. is happy. You could see it on his face, you know, and it shows on the field whenever he puts on that pink jersey. He's having a blast. He's loving yes, you're it. Right. I mean, that he's playing. When like somebody a happy is man. feeling like you're that, right. when somebody's feeling so free like that. Oh my God, that's dangerous for the rest that's of the league. Point. And Inter Miami's they're going to be representing uh, the MLS in the 2025 FIFA World Cup, the Club World Cup. Yeah, so that's and that's pretty impressive get the too. First match, I think too. I yeah, think they said. yeah. opening so, night will be uh, at uh, Hard Rock. Yep, I'm Hard telling you that that Club World Cup is going to be awesome. It, it, oh, that I, is. I, I can't people, wait for that. FIFA, look, they get a lot of criticism. They make some bad decisions along the way, like any massive organization or business will. They're going to mm-hmm. not make every good decision, but FIFA makes a lot of good decisions along the way too. And I think this Club World Cup is one of them. I really do. I actually would love yeah. to see it just like every four years, you know, mm-hmm. build up who goes based on the winners of these, you know, because you're getting a lot of teams in there. You're going to need a lot of, you know, determine how those that criteria are, fine tune it more and just build it up where it's like every four. Oh my goodness, Mario. I mean, it's going to yeah. be incredible. And it, you know what? You want to play it every time here in the United States? That's fine by me too. Seriously, like if mm-hmm. other countries don't want it or what, no problem. Bring it here. It's going to be a little <laughs> tease for that that World Cup that's coming the next year. Absolutely, after that. yeah. And I mean, yeah, our cell and Seattle Sounders is going to be in this Club World Cup too, representing MLS. Seattle so Sounders, yeah, you're right. 
they're going to have games yeah. at their Lumen Field. So, I mean, that'll be kind of really cool for the fans of, obviously, of Seattle. They and are. Lumen, you know. That's true. But, you know, and it, like, yeah, it's going to be great. East East Drama 8-9. and nine. Congratulations to Montreal. Gets a big win. Atlanta comes through, too. P- Philadelphia, D.C. I can't feel that sorry for you when you miss out, Mario. They won four games each at home. Four. Yeah. Out of 17, you win one more and you're in the playoffs, right? Like, you can't yeah. have an argument. You can't be that shocked if you win four home games all year long that you miss the playoffs. I mean, sorry. Better luck next year for DC and Philly, but they came close. I mean, they what were a right shame. there. And to have the Golden Boot champ, Christian Benteke, yeah, and not be able to shame. qualify for the playoffs, that is a shame. All you needed well, was a draw. That's all you needed. And you can't get that done with the leading goal scorer in the entire league. Yeah. You get rocked 3 0. Well, if you listen really closely right now, listen in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. DC United just gave up another goal. So, I mean, oh, that, that's a, that was their problem year. They could not <laughs> stop giving up goals. Uh, they were not a defensive unit that should be in the playoffs, frankly. So, that was their obviously Achilles heel because you're right. They had Benteke up there scoring goals for fun, but they were giving mm. them up at a much higher clip for fun, unfortunately. And uh, so yeah. they miss out. So it's Montreal and Atlanta for the right to lose to Miami in the round of uh, best of three there. But, <laughs> Pretty much. You know, I was listening to a podcast that I'd really, uh, soccer-wise, a couple of the gentlemen mm-hmm. that I really like listening to. Um, both have had ties to MLS in the past, David Goss, Tom Bogert. And they had a great point, Mario. You know, we hear them, we hear like the Premier League talk about that, the championship playoffs like what a you know expensive game it is if you win the the right to go to the Premier League that's hundreds of million you know it's like one game is on the line where which team's going to win the playoff one of them's going to be getting hundreds of millions of dollars more because they get into the Premier League and he was saying yeah. this is almost you know not to the same extent but you get the chance to host Messi right whoever wins this game Montreal versus Atlanta you're the mm-hmm. eight or nine seed. Yeah, you got to go play Inter Miami, which good luck. <laughs> but you will host Lionel Messi's Inter Miami. You will cash time. in, yeah, <laughs> with the Messi there. I yeah. mean, can you imagine Atlanta? You know that stadium. They're, they they want to win that oh, game yeah. against Montreal. That game is going to be red hot. Yes, that Montreal game. And now, now again, it's not Messi. I'm not, but Vancouver, Portland, in the West, they'll host LAFC. Whoever wins that. That's going to yep. be a massive game and a massive draw for either side. So we saw what Vancouver's crowd was like when LAFC went up there for the regular season. So just, you know, obviously late in the regular season there, that extra game. So whew, yeah. it's going to be – those eight, nine games are going to be insane. They're coming up midweek here. Don't mm-hmm. blink. You might miss them because they're starting, you know. So, <laughs> uh, But those teams have to be ready. I'm not counting those in this, Mario. So let's presume – Whoever you want, when I ask you this question, either one you can yeah. pick. But let's go the let's uh, get the best non LAFC first round matchup. So let's forget the Portland Vancouver winner versus okay. LAFC because we're LAFC. You know, obviously we do the radio. Pick another one that you can't wait to watch. In other words, what series sticks out to you? I really want to see this Galaxy versus Colorado best of three series sure. because if Colorado can take advantage of having one game at home in that altitude and then yep. go back to LA for that third and final deciding game. I think Colorado could go in there really feeling motivated. The whole squad can feel like, okay, let's get this done. This is a one and done. This is a knockout game pretty much. That third game on the road in Carson. It's tough out to play in Carson, but I really, really like the fact that it's two out of three and they get one game at home in mm. Colorado, which is tough to play at for, for any it, team it to go into that altitude. Yeah, so, I feel bad for Colorado. I like that, that one in the West. Georgie Mihailovic gets injured in the last game, though. We got to wait. And as we're doing this, we don't know exactly what the status is yet. So mm-hmm. that could be a big blow, of course. Now nah, you never want to. But I see what you mean in terms of you still got to go up in that altitude, no matter who Colorado runs out there. It's gonna to be tough. I mean, it doesn't matter. Who coming up a heartbreak for the Galaxy in that last game. You know, they could have yeah, went in right super high. You know, that first game at Dignity Health Sports Park, the Galaxy yeah. better come out flying. Yes, and just try to put that loss past. You know, put that Houston loss past you as fast as possible. If I'm Greg mm-hmm. Vanny, man, I'm tearing into him like this. Better be five nil 
I mean, yeah. Not, of course, a win is a win. You take whatever. But I'm saying yeah. they better come out flying and to mm-hmm. get that out of the, get that bad taste out of their mouth as soon as possible in front of their fans. And look, as Mario said, they've had that success at home. They haven't lost at Dignity Health Sports Park this year. If you remember, their only home loss was at the Rose Bowl to LAFC. Yeah. So, yeah, Mario. Right. Remember hey, these games here in the first round. Somebody must win, right? If they're tied at the end of regulation, they go to penalty to PKs, and then we got to get a winner. Factor. So, yeah, yeah. Which is a, a scary factor too, in a way. It is. Does Colorado go in there and you know at some point start going for that that yeah, draw, and get the PKs, and then get the win, and then go home? I mean, it's mm. it's a lot of different strategy when you go into these different uh, playoff matches and di- different rounds because there's different implications, right? Different rules. Yeah, I, I kind of I definitely like your thoughts on that matchup, and I want to see it. My pick was. RSL and Minnesota in the three six, yeah. Uh, because That's a I good think one. both teams actually are feeling very good going into the playoffs. I think yes. now RSL hasn't been as hot as Minnesota. Minnesota unbeaten in their last five in MLS to finish so strong. I mean, they were a yeah. team that was on the outside looking in for you know they had some really bad stretches early in the season, but now mm-hmm. they're one of the hottest teams in MLS. Were it not for LAFC, they really would be the hottest team certainly in the West and you know, and all of MLS. So that's not going to be an easy test for RSL, but good luck going into Sandy, Utah twice too. I mean, to try to yeah. get out of that series potentially. So I think Minnesota, Minnesota could Minnesota, shake things up in the West. Yeah, you're right, Dave. And they're coming off a big, you know, big win, four goals. Yeah, it's Four a good goals matchup. at home, riding right into the playoffs. Good talent matchup between the two. Yep. I mean, they're both very talented. Yes. There's some interesting players. Uh, on the Eastern side, it feels... The only reason I didn't pick one of them for my – it feels like there's very – I don't know. I don't think the upsets are going to happen in the East until maybe later, but it just feels very chalky. You know, like the favorites, mm-hmm. there's good matchups for the favorites in these games. Yeah. Uh, again, you never know. I mean, upsets can happen. The best of three kind of limits the upsets in a sense, which is fine in my opinion. If you've earned the top exactly. seeds, you know, like, I was going to say that I was going to go with Columbus and New York because I like that. And, yeah, you know, sure. they they're running that back. They just play. They're running it back. But the better team usually will win in a series. Right. Yeah. You have two out of three. So it's less potential of uh, upset, you know, in a knockout game. One game. Well, it's funny you game. mentioned that one, especially because even if it's the better team, maybe Minnesota's the better team than RSL right now. Mm-hmm. Right, but I have I had put little arrows up or down for how I felt the team was coming into the playoffs, and yeah. my system is if you got two arrows up, that means you're just sizzling, and you're you know okay. you've got all the momentum. If you have two mm-hmm. arrows down, that's the worst. It's like you're just ice cold. And yeah. I got Red Bulls as an arrow down a bit. I don't think yeah, feel you're like right. they're just you know, but I got mm-hmm. Columbus as an arrow up, like they yeah. feel like they're so that's a tough matchup. I actually have Colorado as one of the worst. The Colorado, to me, is the worst team coming into the playoffs in terms of their momentum like or their recent form. They could still mm-hmm. be dangerous. They're a good team. But teams like yeah. Miami, because they're winning, you know, they're on fire. They're winning the LAFC, of course, red yeah. hot to finish. Seattle. Two arrows. On a two very arrows good up, right? streak. Yeah. Two <laughs> arrows up for LAFC. Two arrows up yep. for Minnesota. Columbus yep. is an arrow up. I know, you know, that people could argue mm-hmm. with me about that. Um, but... So yeah, it's very interesting how these might shake off, shake down in terms of how they play out. But usually, you're right, Mario. The home side is the home side for a reason when it comes to these seeds, and that's why we keep talking about. And I will harp on it. The regular season means something in MLS. Yeah. It does. People always say oh, it doesn't. You're getting you it can does. get in. It's no. It does. From Look, right Dave, from what the if, jump. What if what if LAFC go into the MLS Cup, and they have to, say, face Columbus. Columbus just got a result at the very, very last minute and added time. It was seconds, the dying seconds of that game. With that result that Columbus got, if there is a rematch of the MLS Cup final, Columbus will host again. Just a matter of seconds they got that Could have been, yeah, what could have been. Even if they drawn, if Columbus had not won the game on Saturday, they would have been coming to LAFC if that same matchup happened. So if yeah, these and it's not just about decision day. 
that's a whole season playing out exactly. in those final seconds, right? So exactly. whenever you can scrape a, lo- a draw from a loss or scrape a win, mm-hmm. maybe you don't play your best. These things yes. matter all along the season. When you let that win slip away, like, ah, exactly. I'm going to miss those two points that we dropped instead we yes. got to draw. This is where it comes into play right here. Couldn't agree more. Could not agree more. And certainly – Going from a win to a draw is more painful than going from a draw to a loss, mathematically, too. So those are the things that really add up. You True. Absolutely got to get wins. you got to end. Kudos to LAFC, one of the few teams that got 19 wins on the season. Mm. Uh, you know, impressive. You have to win games in MLS, right? It's not even about losses in, 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 to a certain extent. It's don't. Don't drop points. It's not just losses, I should say. Don't drop points if you can help yes. it. And it's yeah, it makes a difference. And Columbus hold on held on to that. So they're technically like the second seed in the playoffs, the Columbus crew. It, it goes into Miami, if you're wondering, of course, winning the supporter shield. Columbus, LAFC, LAFC LA yeah. Galaxy, Cincinnati, and then so on and so forth. So yeah, it makes a huge difference. Absolutely right. Mario, this is gonna be fun. No doubt. The playoffs are here. You can catch LAFC hosting Vancouver or Portland, whoever wins that play-in game. Sunday, October 27th, our first match of that best of three. Pre-game 6 p.m. on ESPN LA app and 710 ESPN. That's Massive right. LA sports weekend culminating with LAFC kind of being alone on Sunday to have all the, you know, all the highlights, all the juice coming into that match, uh, all the, the power of uh, 710 ESPN behind it and the ESPN LA app, which is amazing as well. So check out our broadcast there, Mario. As always, I'm pumped. We're not going to make predictions like who's going to win. You know, LAFC, good luck somebody trying to beat us. You're going to you're gonna have to play the very best and have LAFC play poorly. But things happen. We know this. It's, it is the playoffs. It's a crapshoot. But enjoy the ride, everybody, because MLS playoffs are amazing. They're ridiculous. They're fun. They're sad. They're painful. They're gut wrenching. <laughs> They're all awesome. The all of the above. Yes. So I love it, Mario. Can't wait, brother. Good stuff, man. Can't wait. Can't wait for this Sunday. Vancouver, Portland. Good luck to you guys. But the prize for you guys for winning that <laughs> playing game, you come to BMO Stadium and you could feel the wrath of the 3252 and the LAFC because it's on and LAFC are on a quest for trophies. I can't wait. Dave is going to be awesome, man, this Sunday. Black and gold marching for hopefully a third straight MLS Cup appearance, which would be amazing Oof. as well. So yeah. that is what's on the line for LAFC. And again, it begins Sunday, pregame 6 p.m. on 710 ESPN and the ESPN LA app. Mario, great stuff as always. Have a good week, brother. Let's go. 